Well, good morning, folks. Welcome back to the farm. Beautiful, beautiful, good Friday morning here. A little frosty yet. I think it's minus 11 here this morning. Anyways, I'm going to grab a bottle of milk, run over to the barn, try to bottle feed old cupcake again there, and then uh, get a bit of breakfast in us. And I think we've got a pretty big day ahead of us. The wife has a bit of a home renovation project that uh, she's been she's been working entirely by herself but today's the day that she says oh I, I need some help so we're gonna get the air compressor and the saw table and everything over to the house and then also sometime in between before after during I'm not sure when we're gonna bring all the sheep back into the barn and split off the ewes that have lambed you know a week or so ago anything anything a week or older ago that's already lambed get them kicked out to the field to the east and just help us keep track of better where we're at with lambing for one and uh, reduce some of the competition for space in the barn all right got my little bottle mixed up actually this is the, the nipple off of a sheep bottle but then the bottle is actually a baby bottle that I had left over from from the kids when they come back from the hospital actually kind of handy nice little size for a good newborn lamb and uh, so I got milk powder and a teaspoon of electrolytes in there try and get this lamb the old jump start that it needs i say jump start but it's been like well it's been over a week now that we've been managing this stupid lamb and i say stupid because it, it honestly is so dopey that uh it just it just wouldn't pick up on its own so it's purely by human intervention alone that the thing is even alive morning ladies any new lambs? Boy, it's sure busy in here. We gotta get this place cleaned out. Oh wait, yeah, we need two outside. Got two in the nursery. Well, three in the nursery. Two ewes, three lambs, and far too many lambs in here. So they gotta get kicked out to the east. But for now, oh, I'm gonna find that. I'm gonna find a little old cupcake. Give her the bottle, and then everybody else that's in here can, can get out to the south for. A couple hours at least, and we'll we'll bring them, fetch them back in, and start them back here after breakfast. Maybe after lunch, we'll see. We'll see what the wife has in mind here. Come on, sheepy sheeps. Come on out. It was pretty frosty last night. It was actually quite humid in the barn. Come on out, ladies. I might have to keep the door open once the uh, once the sun really comes up there. Let it let it dry out a bit now. What are you making? Um, lunch. Your lunch? Yep. Perfect. All right. Had a bit of breakfast, made some pancakes and some eggs. That was delicious. I'm just going to run out and burn a bit of garbage and then fetch up the miter saw. So I left the miter saw in the barn over there when I put the kick plate four feet high up all the way around the place. And just because I didn't have a lot of room in the shop, I just left it there because I wasn't going to use it all winter anyways. But now I, I I don't know what the what the wife has planned in the laundry room. I don't know what her project is. She's had carte blanche. So far, she's painted the wall and uh, and stained some boards. And we're gonna apparently air nail those boards up to the wall today. So we'll see what that looks like. And then uh, and then we'll get on to sorting sheep here this afternoon. I think. And I'll, I tell you, I'll be glad. We're not that far off. Uh, probably two thirds done. But I'll be glad when we're done with this because uh, I'm well, I'm kind of tired of getting up so much at night. But I'm also tired of smelling like the inside of a sheep's butthole. So uh, yeah, they can they can go out to the field. That'd be fantastic. Holy man, I tell you, I'm sure glad I bought my wife this air compressor on wheels because the old one was about well, I was about two thirds that size. Didn't have wheels. The guy had to pack it like a peasant down the hill all the way to the house. And uh, of course, it's only got one handle. Just awkward. Too awkward for how heavy it is. This, oh, look at that luxury. Wheels just rolled down. Just beautiful. Couldn't ask for better. Such such a good husband buying that for my wife for her birthday. All right, well, I'm uh, ba heading back to the shop to get some more brad nails. Looks like what we're building is kind of a dado rail about five feet up. And I think the wife is gonna put some put some hooks on it. I'm not sure for what, but uh, 
I'll see what I got in the shop here for nails because I went and grabbed was these two and a half inch ones. And if you nail down into a one by six with a uh, two and a half inch brad nail, pretty good chance it's gonna go down and out and yeah, it's gonna be a disaster. So I'll see if I got some inch and a half or something like that, a little bit shorter here. Well, it looks like short as I got is two inch and it's uh, it's an 18 gauge, so it's a little bit thinner than the 16 gauge that I was using in the big air nailer. So I got both nailers in the house, so at least I won't have to make one more trip to the shop. All right, well, we're all done splitting the sheep off. The big mamas and their big babies are out to the east. And the little ones and the ones that have yet to lamb are still to the south. Anyways, would have loved to have uh, vi videoed some of that. However, it required both hands of everybody on the farm. So that didn't work out. But uh, anyways, it's done. And my buddy Robin over at Bloom Enterprises, aka Millionaire Farmer, check him out on YouTube, by the way. Uh, texted and said that the pig feed and the chicken feed is ready. So I'm going to go get some feed and fill up the grain shed. Charlotte, what did you make with those sticks? Um, I just put one like over like this. Yeah. So I can remember, remember Jesus. You made, what did you make? A cross so I can remember Jesus. Oh, why do you want to remember Jesus? Because I love him. Aww. It's a good day to remember Jesus, hey? Good Friday? Yep. Yep. What happened on Good Friday? Jesus died on your cross. That's right. This is good wholesome Easter weekend entertainment. How are you figuring, buddy? You gonna get this guy or what? I don't know. What about you two? Are you gonna be any help? We got to be on this side here, girls. You stay over there, buddy. It's coming back, buddy. Over here, Emmy. Charlotte, you guys stay in front of the truck here. Get him, buddy. Maybe get... Wasn't me, it was... You go get him, buddy. I'll hold your net. You chase him back over here. Yeah. You chase him back around this way, dude. Well, we're home here now from Bloom's. We've got our two bags of feed. My one strap actually blew off just as they come around the corner on the way up the hill. So I just stopped and chucked that back up on the trailer. But besides the fact that maybe lost something, I also gained something. Let's see if the wife watches the video, what she thinks about this. Way in the back there. Oh, look at that thing go. <laughs> Wife is going to be pissed. But it's funny, so we're going to do it anyways. We're not going to tell her. We're going to see how long it takes her to figure it out. I almost got busted there. Wife come out of the house. She's like, did you did you take that chicken to Robin's house with you? I said, oh, I, yeah, there's a chicken in the box of the truck. And we're going to see. We're going to see just how long it takes her to figure out. There's a rooster floating around here, but it buggered off over here. I don't know where it went. I don't want it to, I want it to go to the chicken house. I don't want it to just go off to the neighbors somewhere and they end up with a free rooster because that wouldn't be cool. 
but uh, I think it's an Easter egg. -er. So we get some get some green get some chickens laying some eggs, and then maybe get some green eggs. It's that time of year. Well, we had to do a bit of a search, but uh, found the rooster. He's uh, made his home in the barn here. He wants nothing to do with me, and that's just that's just the way I want it. I want if if I come out or the kids come out, I want him to opposite direction. Take off, eh? But uh, otherwise, otherwise you're going to be in a soup pot. But so I did. I did probably the worst thing you can do. You know, kidnap a chicken in the middle of the day and then just release it into the wide open space. I really should have done is left it penned up until it got dark, and then and then it went to sleep. And then I could have just moved it to the chicken house where everybody else is asleep, and then just set it up on a perch somewhere. And then tomorrow morning it would have been everybody triple happy chickens and. Uh, Anyway, so I'm gonna close the barn door for now, I think, and then just let it kind of let just let it kind of settle in for a bit, because it can fly a long way. I was surprised that thing probably flew a hundred feet, so, and it can run. I you know that's the one thing we had quite the adventure, quite the rodeo to round this thing up. Uh, it's the interesting chicken fact is that uh, chickens can outrun humans by one mile an hour, and so. If you don't have a space like, you know, where you can kind of corner it and outmaneuver it, if you're just out in the open plains, you don't stand a chance. Well, it's now, oh, I don't know, close on 8.30? The sun still hasn't gone down, that's the beauty. I'm just in the tractor here now, got one of the bags of grain on, I've already got the first one unloaded. So if you're new to the channel or you haven't seen us unload grain before, we don't own a grain auger, so I buy these bulk bags my buddy Robin over at Bloom Enterprises, aka Millionaire Farmer on YouTube. And uh, what I did is I built a six foot pallet, six foot by four foot pallet, with an 18 inch square cutout in the center so that the chute on the bottom of that bag can stick out through that hole. And then I take a piece of four inch ABS uh, drain pipe and I zip tie it to the chute of the bag and then I just hoist it up in the air a little hatch that I have on the side of my grain shed and uh, and then untie the string and, and gra let gravity do the rest. So basically allow physics to work for me because I don't have a mechanical advantage and uh, I mean I guess I have a mechanical advantage in the form of the tractor but I don't have the auger so option B if that doesn't work is I have to set the bag outside the grain shed and uh, and then just take the five gallon bucket up the five gallon bucket of grain and up the steps and into the grain shed and over the side of the, yeah, so like do that like a peasant for, yeah, it doesn't take long, maybe 25 minutes or something like that. And it's a hell of a workout. And I have had to do that in the summertime when this tractor has been gone hay and or, uh, you know, we've had a breakdown or something like that. But uh, yeah, really it's kind of a no excuses. If you don't have a piece of equipment, you can still find a way to get it done kind of approach. So just shut the tractor off so I could show you this. So you see, I got up on the loader, six foot pallet with the uh, 18 inch hole underneath where the, uh, the the bag chute comes out of. Four inch ABS drain pipe coming out of it. Just kick that in the open hatch. And then I just climb up my step ladder, untie that knot, and all the, dra all the grain flows through nicely into the shed. There you go, got my knot untied. And the grain's just pouring out. Now it's really important when you do this that, as you can see, outside the line of fire, there's 2,000 pounds of grain up there on a homemade pallet on a set of bale for it. So you want to make sure you're able to reach in, but you're not directly underneath anything. Because that can make for a bad day on the farm. Okay, so you can see, uh, typically I don't buy two bags of grain at once. And typically, if I did, I probably wouldn't do it like this, where it's in separate sides or anything like that. But so we've got pigs coming here soon, and that's what this bag is for. This is pig feed, and it's got pig mineral in it, and that pig mineral has elements of copper in it, a higher copper content than what I can feed to the sheep. In this side of the bin, although it's intended to be a, a chicken feed mix, it's just grain, right? And we feed it to the chickens, we feed it to the horses, we feed it to the cows, we feed it to the, well, anybody that wants it, essentially. So that stuff there is only for the pigs.